you are live, please join. Just see in the chat if all you hear me do anything. Want to make sure, of course, all technical issues ironed out. You know that goes. So let me know if all you hear me. I'm going to pop out this chat. Morning, 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 CT Gill. Morning, Trinity Trini. Morning. All they, all they hearing me, right? All they, all they hearing me? Loud and clear. Nice. That's what we're talking about. All right. So. Morning. Marjorie, Joseph, Abby, Helen. Morning, morning. Just in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in time. We're going to do our breakfasts here. Nice. So, I want to wait for a few other people to join before I start that. But in the meantime, I'm going to explain what I'm going to do. So this is a Spanish omelette that I'm doing. Um, other places might call it a frittata, but it's a real easy recipe and it's just a few ingredients you need. Onion. The, the original thing is just onion potato and eggs and well oil or butter by using a little pimento just to get a little trini flavor today and salt black pepper you could use herbs in it if, if you want you could use like thyme shadow benny if you want but i'm keeping it simple and just using four ingredients plus some salt and black pepper so we're going to get into the Spanish omelette in a little bit. Morning, Laura from Pennsylvania. Thanks for logging on. Giselle, morning. Brianna, morning. Sarah, morning, morning. Morning, everybody. So, as the title says in the video, I'm doing a Spanish omelette. And it is a very easy thing to do, very easy recipe. Um, so, but before I jump in, today is the first day of lockdown. How are you going? How are you dealing with this lockdown business? All right? And Laura, how are things in Pennsylvania? Are you all on lockdown in Pennsylvania or is still free to move about but just not congregate? Morning, Adrian. Blessings, blessings. This is a cast iron skillet. And I bought these in Price Mart. It's coming a two pack. I using this. I mean, you could use a regular frying pan for this, but I using this because it um. The thing is, it could take heat, obviously, from the stove top, and then if you need to put it in the oven, you could just stick it right into the oven, and you could bake in it as well. Now, so I'll explain. I'll explain why I'm using it just now. Tracy, we are Tracy. Thanks for logging on. Light and light and vibes. Yes, man. Marina, good morning. Good morning. Yes, yeah, so I mean we had to stay inside. We on lockdown. So all you know how the thing go. I decided alright, I'm gonna do a little breakfast this morning. I was supposed to do a live either Saturday or Sunday, but I had a little migraine and all kinda of recovering. It's still there, it's still kinda of, still kinda of foggy. But um, I decided, you know, first morning of the lockdown was a good opportunity to come and just vibes it all yeah, a little bit now. Nice, Abby, nice. How the um, stew lentils come out? That is actually a favorite recipe of mine. I really like to make stew lentils. Stew lentils and anything, rice, dumpling, provision, yeah. Okay, right, so I guess it's the same thing here, Laura. We're not really free to move around, only they have a list of essential services and those people could be on the road. And of course, if you have to go for essential items, whether it be grocery stuff or stuff in the pharmacy, I, I believe they'll allow you to move around and, and do that, but no kind of congregating, no kind of um, social gathering of any sort, so we're on lockdown. Um, this brand is the Tramonita, Tramontina, sorry, Tramontina, 
Tramantina brand. Let me see if I could zoom in and show you. Yeah, so there's a Tramantina brand. Um, and price smart does carry it. But if you're looking for a reliable brand when it comes to cast iron um, cookware, Lodge is a very good one. Lodge just make real good um, cast iron pans. And this is, yeah, I mean, they have different sizes. These are a nice size to do this kind of thing, where you could do like um, pies and little bacon and that kind of thing. This is real good. Or even if you're just making an omelette or a quiche, you can make quiche in this as well. This, I, I find these pans are real nice. This is a four inch. Yeah. So I, I really like, I really like this size. And they have smaller ones, they have ones that are bigger, and of course they have the large ones. So those real good. Right, so blessings. Morning, Alima. Morning, Victoria. Right. Morning, Jennifer. Jamelia. Morning, morning, morning. All right. Allison, morning. Okay. So we are going to start the process now. I'm making this Spanish omelette. Now, I'm telling you off the bat, this is not a healthy breakfast. All right, so if you're, if you're looking for something healthy, this is not it. Because it have, you know, using some butter and then you're frying and that kind of thing. So it's not the healthiest of breakfast. But, you know, it, it ain't too bad either. I mean, it's not like, you know, it's not a hot dog. But it's not oats, you understand? So we're going for, you know, a nice delicious breakfast that, you know, not really on too much on the healthy side. But again, I'll try to keep it as healthy as possible. So I'm just using some butter here. And there's about a tablespoon of butter. The first thing we have to do is caramelize the onions, right? So. Rest the city back here. And for this, you really want to um, I'm a tea here too. Now, for this size of onion and this amount, I'm just going to use half of the onion. I wouldn't use the whole thing. And, um, you know, to get it to caramelize faster, you want to cut it as thin as possible, almost as if you're using a mandolin. So, you gotta really kind of use your knife skills here and try to get these slices of onion as thin as you could get them because that will help it to cook faster. I mean, nobody want to stand up and be making breakfast for an hour. I mean, if you want to, you could. But I, I would prefer not to. So as thin as possible, I'll go in with these slices of onion. This is, I would say, like a medium size, almost large onion. If you have a small one, you could use the a whole small one. But because of the size of this, I'm using half it. Put that in. And the caramelization process. Um, will really bring out, sort of break down the onion and bring out the natural sugars in it now. So as I you'll get this real sweet flavor from caramelized onions. I'm using a small burner because I didn't want too much heat. So I didn't want it to start to burn before it caramelized now. So I'm using the smallest burner and I had the heat on low. And with, I mean, this part of the process has take a little while. So you have to kind of be patient with it. Amanda, speak for yourself. You, you speak for yourself, but we. That is you and the ants in your pocket. I like to eat healthy breakfast because I might go to town for lunch. I might go to town for dinner. You understand? I like balance. So usually in the morning, I eat in oats 
or eating some yogurt and granola or something like that because I know easily my lunch could be, you know, something that ain't so wholesome then. or my dinner could not be something wholesome. So I just try to keep balance. If I eat in this for breakfast, more than likely I eat in something real light, like a salad or something for lunch. Balance, balance is key. You gotta balance the thing. Don't, don't, don't load up the scene, Amanda. Don't load up the scene. Morning, Zaida. Keisha, morning. Morning from Turks and Caicos. How are things going on in, what, what's the scene in Turks and Caicos? What, are they on lockdown like we are in Trinidad? Today's our first day of lockdown. I mean, if Trinis was listening to the warnings I was coming, you probably might not uh, need the lockdown, but oh gosh, well, well, let's see what's going on by Shagona's market this weekend. Tell people to congregate, people congregating, people not social distancing. Why? So, these onions well on the way. Oh, they look okay. Nah, this is not rusting at all. And I'll, I'll tell you how to take care of it in a bit, Asian. I'll tell you what's the best way to take care of it. So as you could see, the onions already start to caramelize. I'm going to zoom in and show you. You see, they already start to turn. And I want to continue this process until the get real soft, translucent. Again, we don't want it to burn, we want it to caramelize. So that's why keeping the heat low and then it do its thing. So while that caramelizing there, I'm gonna start with the potato. And with the potato is the same um, it's the same concept. We wanna cut it thin because we want it to cook faster. I in two minds, I could either leave the skin on this potato to get, you know, more the nutritional benefits out of it, or I could peel it. I'll peel it. Sometimes I like to leave the skin on and go for that kind of rustic vibes now. But usually in the traditional Spanish omelette recipes, they peel the potato. So I'll peel it. But again, if you want to keep the skin on and go for that whole kind of rustic peel, you could do that, that is no problem. And you don't have to use um, Irish potato with this. You could use sweet potato. If you look on our website, there is a recipe for sweet potato Spanish omelette. So this is just um, a version of that, but this is more the traditional uh, recipe where they would use this kind of potato and not sweet potato. Right. So again, with this potato, you want to cut it into thin slices, almost as if you're cutting it with a mandolin. So what I'll do is cut it in half first, so you have a nice flat surface, so the potato not rolling around. You understand? So you get it flat on the surface, and then you cut it into slices. You try to cut the potato whole, and then you don't have a sturdy um, item or product to work with and your knife could slip, your hand could slip, and ice problems, and we don't want that, so, right. All right, the onions caramelize, so, I'm gonna put this aside. And then we'll start with the potatoes. Is what you're looking for real thin pieces because you wanted to cook fast. So try to cut it as thin as possible. If you can't manage this with your knife, 
You could go ahead and use our mandolin. So as you can see, he's trying to go for paper thin with the putting tools. how to cook. Alright. good. And these will take about I would say about eight minutes. If it cut is thin enough to cook through. The thing about this is you have to keep tossing it for it to cook evenly. I feel I might have too much potato here, anyway, but I don't commit, so you're using oil. Right. And now I get the wanna because you want the potato to cook evenly, I wanna kinda toss it around in the pan. And I be wondering how come no seasoning ain't happening yet? We're not ready for the seasoning stage yet. This is just the cooking the different part stage and then you'll get the seasoning it. Alright. Morning Andrea, how are you going? Thanks for joining. Morning, morning, morning Nicole. Yeah, it's plenty of potato ali, man, but don't worry, it go break down. Don't frighten. We good. So Adrian, getting back to how you does um, season the pan. First things first, after you use the pan, um, do not, you know, you know we in Trinidad, as soon as you use a pan or a pot and things stick up on it, the first thing we like to do is just throw water on it and leave it. Under no circumstances, you can leave a cast iron pot to soak. Do not put your cast iron pot to soak. If it have things stick up on it, however, get a Brillo pad, something for scouring, and scrub the pan properly and get the stuff off. Even if you had to use, um, actually no, don't, don't use nothing too abrasive. Just use a, a nice Brillo pad and scrub it. After you scrub it, you wash it off, you rinse it off. Do not leave it to dry. Take it and put it on your stove top, turn on the heat and let the heat dry it. Because you leave that water on it, it will make it saturous. So, if it's on the fire, you let the fire um, dry it. Then you just take some oil, put some oil. I would use a good oil, use some like olive oil or something. Use a little bit of olive oil, put it on the pan, wipe the pan and that is it. And you do that every single time you use the pan and you have to wash it. And that is the way to keep it in, you know, pristine condition. Anything other than that, let's say leaving it to soak and them kind of thing, that will destroy the pan or make it sad or something. So, well, you know what? It have a way to bring it back. So if it's rusty right now, it have a way to bring it back. I'll see if I find a link and I'll post it in the comment section when I finish with the video. I saw um, a video and um, some 
tutorials on how to restore cast iron pans. So uh, look for that. I think it involves using some emery. I use some emery and take, like, take off a layer and that kind of thing. I'll see if I find it for you. Don't frighten me. Hey, morning, morning, Natasha. What's going on? Hey, John John, where's he seen? Morning, Janelle. Yeah, bigger pot, but we done here. We done here, so we go in. We making it a problem. As a cook, you gotta, you know, know how to improvise. So, yeah, it would have been ideal to have a bigger pot, but again, you're already here, you're working with this pot. Just to keep it all, moving it around. It'll cook. Two seconds, good. Here I go. Nice. Quality control now. I'm gonna make sure the potatoes doing what it's supposed to do. So, again, I have um, a recipe for this on the website. It's a sweet potato version that I made also like a year ago. This is the more traditional version of the dish. And the thing about it is you don't have to cook the potatoes separate to the onions. You could cook them at the, at the same time. But that would have been too much back and here. So we're doing it like this. Natasha from Pity Valley, morning, morning, what's going on? We're doing um, a Spanish omelette. As you can see, this will take a little bit of time because it's potato. You know, potato, don't cook. It's just not a thing that's cooked now for now. So it'll take a couple of minutes for it to cook through. A matter of fact, what I could do, and what I will do actually, is I'm going to cover this down till it kind of steam. So I'm going to cover for this. So again, is you know ways to improvise. So I can't toss it around as much as I, I would like. And this is not the cover for this, but it will work. So add any cover for this, but then add a kind of steam effect so that it will cook on the bottom and the steam circulating will make sure that it cooks on the top as well and in the middle. So be good to go. All right. So, the other ingredients, of course, we have egg. Can't make an omelet without eggs, right? And this is not, obviously, I shouldn't say obviously, but this is not a traditional um, ingredient, pimento, but I wanted to kind of trinify the recipe a little bit now. So I added pimento to this. I guess I could cut it up one time while it's doing it to do. And if you wanted, you could add um, you could add bacon to this. You could add sausage. You could uh, go in with herbs if you wanted to. You could even add other veggies. You could add sweet pepper, um, carrots, like grated carrots, and make it like you know a full blown uh, omelet. But the Traditional Spanish omelette recipe is onions, potato, and egg. And as I say, uh, some 
So I guess like the other name for this would be frittata. Basically the same thing. And as you can see, I'm not using any garlic in this um, recipe. Which, you know, to some people might be an abomination. I mean, I am from the school of, I as always use garlic in anything I'm doing, but I'm trying to keep this as close to, uh, to authentic as possible. As close to authentic. So, I'm not going to add garlic. Adding the pimento just for a little flavor. Whoa, 27th, what's going on? Zaida, good morning, what's going on? All right. Potatoes coming to come. See that the tender in between. Almost ready. see the potatoes cooking down nicely. I want to add just a little bit of butter to this. Again, as I said, this is not the healthiest of breakfast items, but you're going for deliciousness this morning. The other morning I do oats and that was pure health. You understand? So this morning we're doing it all different. Doing it all different. Don't worry in the KC. We, we, we're cooking with gas here. Don't worry about it. You see the thing is if I use a bigger pot, a bigger pan, when it comes to the time where I had to actually make the omelette, it's not, it's not going to come out the way I wanted to come out. I want to use this size pan because I should be aiming now. Batteries died. The technical difficulties. <laughs> hey, Australia in the house. So I'll aim now. They should be aiming now. Yes? Yes, I'll aim. Right. Nice. Australia in the house. Nice. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll happen away on all in here. Nothing I said. Listen, it's still better than when I do the bread pudding video. The bread pudding video, I went on for half an hour and was talking to myself. The thing didn't even go live. So, these are, you know, small thing. All 
Right. Let's see if those look in good. Nice. Thank you. Thank you for alerting me. So good thing I use this burner. Normally I'll cross on this side and I'm not really paying attention now. But yeah, that, that, that bread pudding video, that was the worst shit. That one was the worst. A whole half an hour, I did talking away, talking away, really explaining this bread pudding. Nobody there. No? So you see, I mean, yes, it, it start off with, you know, potato falling outside the pot and thing, but as you can see, you know, it's it, it, it manageable now. You just have to have a little faith now. Have a little faith in the process. It's manageable now. We, we, we're cooking with gas. Right. I'm going to let this go for like a minute again and then get on to the next part. All right. So how the arm lockdown treating all there so far? Anybody pulling their hair out yet? Hey, Aliyah, morning, morning. Yeah, 27, the ebbs and flows of live videos. Yeah, 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 that is, that is how we go. We live and, again, I have no production team here. It's just me alone. So, you know, things just happen. But we're rolling with it. We live. There's a whole, you know, vibe with the live. Anything could happen. Anything, any number could play. So, no earlier. Coming by you is not essential. Definitely not essential. Dr. Keith Rowley will slap me down. Hey, Darren, what's going on? Darren in the building, right? Delivering? You want your Prime Minister to slap me down, right? Do I not delivering? I under quarant quarantine, lockdown. Or oh, police already on patrol? I mean, yeah, they should be because you know, with all that people still going on, you know, push the limits, people still not going to listen. So, yeah, I guess police would need to be patrolling to make sure people doing the right thing. Because, hey, I ain't gonna lie. When I see the video from um, Shagwana's Market, I was like, wait, hey, people already not taking this thing seriously. Babe. But, you know, hopefully we get through it with not too much um, disruption and not too much casualties and things. So, got to stay hopeful. Right, these potatoes ready. Ready for the next part. I'm going to zoom in and let you see what's going on. See what happened there. So, as you can see, the potatoes cooked, soft, and they're ready for the next portion of this video, or this process, I should say. Right. So, next part is assembling the omelette. I already have the onions here. Ready potato here. Alright? What I'm gonna do is crack the eggs into the bowl. And rule of thumb, always crack your egg into a separate bowl before you put it in a big bowl because you, unless you have x-ray vision, you don't know what's going on inside this egg and you don't know if it's spoiled or not. So you don't want to put a spoiled egg into your into your thing and that will just ruin the whole thing now. So Crack your egg into a bowl first, then pour it in. All right. All right. I 
just using two eggs here. Of course, if you're making this for a group of people, for your family or whatever, you could scale up the recipe. So, I'm just doing it for me. Hence the reason why I want to use in two eggs. I could even use one egg for the sun. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to place the potato into the bowl with the eggs. I'm going to put my pimento. And you notice I didn't sort any pimento. I leave it um, raw. So you get that little, um, you know, pimento is, pimento is not hot pepper. It's more like a kind of fruity seasoning pepper. So I just leave it like that. So you get a kind of difference of flavor going on inside of there now. And what's happening here right now is that the hot potato actually cooking the eggs in the bowl. That is what we want. Now is the time when I'm seasoning. I'm not going to go with too much because I mean it's salted butter that I use it. So I don't want to add too much salt. So I just go with a pinch of salt and a pinch of black pepper and a pinch of paprika. that together nice now gotta let this sit for a minute let's let it sit down and do its thing they come together they kusu me a little bit and then we're gonna pay back on the back into the pot. Now, I'm already watching this and realizing that it might be too much. It might be. So, we go see. I had to be careful because the whole thing about this is it had a form into a nice kind of pie in it. So, that's why I use this size dish because the finished product is supposed to look like a nice kind of pie. So, that's why I'm using it like this. Now, another reason why I use this is there are two ways to do this. Um, omelette. One way is to put it back on the stove top, cook it from the bottom and then put it in the oven under the broiler and let the broiler cook the top. The other way, which is the, I guess the more traditional way, is you put it in the pan, you start to cook it, then you take a plate, you put the plate over it like this, you flip the plate, flip the omelette into the plate, and then you slide the omelette back into the pan for the next side to cook. Now, I'm going to like to tell you, doing it this way is real drama. It could easily go wrong. So, the um, broiler way is the safer way, which we all feel I should do. You should go for it and do it flipping the plate because this really is the way that you would see it done traditionally, or we should go for the broiler. Which, which direction or the feel I should go? Morning, Tora. Do the first way. Flip the plate. <laughs> broiler, plate. Flip it. All right. All right, I'll flip it, because flipping it really, that is the real way, you know? that is the real way. That is the way you're supposed to do it. That is the traditional way, so let me go for the flip. If it fail, I know they're going to really laugh at me, but I don't see. I'm going for the flip. I figure I'll use a bigger plate to flip it. Let's 
Sí. Este son. Nah. See now, the curve of this plate will cause back and on. You see that curve? What I want is that when it rests down, it rests in flat against the rim of the pan. So that plate is back and all. That is our disaster waiting to happen. Let me see what else happens. This. Same kind of effect, you know, the same kind of effect where the curve of the plate causing all the problems. The smaller plate actually fit in better, fit in more snug. So I figure I'll take my chances with the smaller plate. All right. I want to take my chances with a small plate. All there. Now, I'll do this for all there. All there, do, do, do laugh at me if it do come out good. All right. I'm using a smaller plate. So you put the smaller plate on and the smaller plate fit in almost snug so it should flip and come out good and then I should be able to slide it back in. So let me see. You ready? Let me do this. Right. Heat on. This is the last addition of butter. So in all I would say this recipe calls for four tablespoons of butter, which again is not the not the healthiest thing, but you know it will taste good. I'm gonna make sure all these sides get buttered because you don't want it to stick. smart about this and I check to see how much I could actually put. So let me see if the whole thing could fit and we're going with the whole thing. Yeah man, the whole thing will fit. nothing and scrape the bowl. Right. So what you're looking for with this cooking is you're looking for the top to start bubbling. I mean the size will bubble but you're looking for the top to start bubbling. Once the top starts bubbling, you know that it starts, it doesn't start to cook, cook through the middle now. You understand? So, you let this go for a while. It's going to take about, I would say about five minutes. It could be less. Because of the size of the pot and the amount of heat that you're getting, it could be less than five. But the sides start to bubble, and then it'll start to, you know, form that nice crust that we're looking for. But we're looking for the middle as well, and the top to start a bubble so that we know that it's cooking through now. That way that when I flip it onto the plate, the whole thing is not going to end this thing all over the place. So, let me see. <laughs> that, we should be good. We should, we should be good here. We have a nice thing. So, let me, let me see if I could zoom in. I want to change the camera angle so I could zoom in and, and see, let all see what's going on with the Good eating. Right. All 
All right, so as you could see, sides bubbling away. Yeah, what we're looking for is for the center. So again, this will take a while for the heat to cook, cook it through. I want that air to sort of congeal and make it come together. If you don't do that, then you're gonna have a whole big mess. So you have to make sure that it, the cooking process um, going on long enough so that the, 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 the um, omelette itself cooking through the center. Right now we're just cooking on the edges. We gotta make sure that it's cooking through the center and then coming to the top. And we know it'll hold together properly. So we come in to come. Come in to come. Almost, we're almost there. Well, now we're almost there, but we're on our way. We're well on our way. So, zoom back out. I am told, might be totally out of the frame. Am I? I am in the frame. Right. Good. So, And the thing is, um, and, and certain countries does actually make this um, a street, like a street food item and they serve it with um, like ketchup and mayo and that kind of thing. They serve it like almost like a, a kind of like drunk food now. After a night of drinking or whatever, you could go and um, buy it at the side of the road. I can't remember which country it was that I saw it. It's one of them um, travel shows, food shows that I saw that they serve Spanish omelette as a street food. But it is traditionally a breakfast item, breakfast and brunch kind of item. And of course, it have the, I have the sweet potato version on the website. Um, if you scroll right up to the top of the chat, or actually copy and paste it here for you, This is a link to the sweet potato version that I did on the website. Sing a song. I can't sing. You hear my voice? Huh? I, I can't sing no songs. Uh, yeah, it might cook fast if I, if I cover it. I could cover it. It'll cook faster. Now this is, uh, you see, the reason why I didn't cover it is because that is not, they don't traditionally make it like that. No. So I was trying to give you the, you know, traditional method of how they make the Spanish omelette. Covering it is not something that they do. They cook it like this, open, and then they do the flip, the flip thing. So I was trying to keep it as authentic as possible in terms of the process. So I mean, I guess I could cover it and that will, allow for the top to sort of cook as well too. Yes, yes, actually you could add like feta cheese, you could add mozzarella, you could add normal rat cheese, any kind of cheese, you could add parmesan. Yeah, you could add cheese it. Yeah, you could do onions, you could do grated garlic, you could do sweet peppers, you could do carrots, you could do mushrooms, you could do bacon, sausage. You can literally make this the way that you want. Um, just using the base of potatoes and the eggs, and then you could add almost anything to it. And make it exactly the way you want it. Taking off the um, thing because I find it, again steam happening and I don't want it to be wet now. So the steam starting to make a little too much liquid form to the top of it. But if I zoom back in, you would see where the top starting to bubble and cook. So we know we're almost ready for flipping. Let's 
Půjmeně. So, then if you see in here, you see in the egg starting to cook on the top. That's what we're looking for. I'm looking for it to start to cook here as well. And we know we in a gear. We're almost there, almost there. Just our patience. And again, I had this on the lowest heat because I don't want it to burn. So I have it on low heat. I'll give it about uh, two minutes again, and then we'll go for the flip, the flipping action. This has to be real careful because you see the size of plate and then this hot pan there's gonna be a drama yeah rat cheese what is call it that's why i grew up calling it we call it rat cheese the cheese is let's get back in the days we used to get it it go in the parlor like i get it in grease proof paper no? get a piece of grease proof paper with a block of cheese a two dollars block of cheese and thing. i remember that could i go and buy cheese in the parlor yeah rat cheese Nah, man, a bowl of cream of wheat is vibes red. Do, 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 cream of wheat. I really like cream of wheat. I really like cream of wheat. Okay, nice. I think we're ready. I think we're ready to go. So, again, Ole, I'm going to turn this off for the mean, in the meantime. This is going to be a drama. All right. Plate on top. All right, here goes nothing. All right. And now we slide it back on. Get that in. Success. That's what we're talking about. Nice. This, well, I can't do nothing with this, so. This goes here. And I mean, the entire thing cooked through, so this will literally take like a minute to cook on this side. And I mean, a gear. You can see a nice cross going on. Let me zoom in. I always see the cross. I mean, honestly, I'll go for a lighter cross, really. But all eyes vibes, man. So we have a nice cross happening there. The underside or the top. So the top is cooking. And we're almost ready for ready for business. Alright. Morning, Cheryl. Everybody who now join in, morning. We're doing Spanish omelette. I just do the flip. It was not a total disaster. So. Hey, Helen, you're making it? Serious. All right, nice, nice, nice. Hey, market movers on the inside. Big up to market movers. Boom, boom, boom.
if all they don't want to, you know, be out on these streets, risking um, slap down and thing, go to the marketmovers.com and order your uh, fresh goods and grocery items. Yeah, Trini Spanish, Trini Spanish business. We're almost ready. Just gonna let this cook a little bit. Crust up on the bottom as well. And then I'm gonna flip it over onto plate here. And we could be done. Right. So I mean, this is not the easiest of um, recipes, but it's actually a real nice thing to make. It tastes real good. So I would urge you to try it. It's a, it's a nice recipe. And now the moment of truth is to do the final flip back onto the plate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in for this. I don't want to really miss out on that action. So I'm gonna zoom in for the final flip. that off and now roll this right. and that is our Spanish omelette there Spanish omelette I'm gonna um, switch the camera back on to the next side so I could dwell cutting in and all you could see how the layers and thing look. Cut it, cut it so you can get a nice cross section of what the insiders look like when it's finished. So, hold on, let's zoom in a little bit. Right. What it look like on the inside. Nice. And again, you could go in with um, carrots, you could do sausage, bacon, sweet peppers. I mean, anything that you want. You could add cheese. You could just go wild with this and make this your own um, or to your own liking. I wanted to keep it close to traditional, but still give you a little trini, trini nested, so that's our ideal pimentos, but the eggs, the onion, that is the regular vibes in this dish. And it was not too difficult to make, so it's def definitely something that you can make, and I'm sure you have most, if not all of these items, home in your fridge, in your pantry kind of vibes. So yeah, we, I mean, we quarantine cooking, uh, breakfast edition. Of course, I will be doing other uh, dishes for lunch and dinner and that kind of thing as the lockdown and the quarantine uh, progresses. Uh, you know, Friday we did the bacon shark. Before that, we did do curry. We do the yeah, we do the base. Thanks for logging on, thanks for keeping my company and going through the process. I'm glad that all is, um, you know, tell me to flip it rather than put it in the oven because that was a little more dramatic, a little more suspense now. And you see, you get the nice layers and the nice crust and that kind of thing. So thank you everyone.
for joining the chat, for logging on and watching. Of course, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Please subscribe to the channel. I will be posting, well, should, I mean, I have the recipe up on the website already. So it might make sense for our next recipe because all I do is change the potato from sweet potato to regular potato. So please click on the link there. It's in the chat, it's in the description uh, for a link to the recipe. Um, check out the recipe on the website. Let me see what's going on in the chat. Yeah, Keisha, you're missing, the, you're missing the live because you're not following us. If you follow on Twitter, Instagram, and like us on Facebook, at least an hour before I do the lives, as always, post a link saying that we go in live. So that's right. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and when I'm putting up a link to the live, you would see that all right, we're going live in an hour, we're going live in two hours, so you wouldn't miss it. And subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you'll be notified as well. You know? Thanks everyone for logging on. I hope you all have a good day. I mean, it's the first day of lockdown, so. Um, I hope you make it through. Don't pull your hair out. Don't, don't, you know, don't go crazy. We still have, you know, quite some, quite a few days to go with the lockdown. And then again, we don't know how long this thing will last. I believe we now start. I, look, I believe we're looking at a few months of coronavirus in. So we now start. Try and keep sane. And we will try to keep doing more videos so that, you know, we could keep your company. We could bring people together, chat, you know, do some lives. And please, you know, feel free to try the recipes and share, of course, with your friends and family. Again, thanks for watching and have a good day. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.